and welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, India's only daily television platform for small businesses. Now, while world-class healthcare continues to be the need of the hour, making that healthcare affordable and accessible are challenges that loom large. And to take on the topic, tonight on the show, I'm joined by a very special guest, the Deputy Managing Director of Aster DM Healthcare, Alicia Mupin. What sort of opportunities can both aspiring and established female entrepreneurs such as yourself avail in Dubai's largest startup landscape? I actually think Dubai has been one of those fertile lands for people from all over the world, uh, all nationalities, all genders, and uh, it's very promising to look at uh, uh, the kind of environment that they've set out here for women in particular. Uh, I think the whole vision and the uh, uh, and the philosophy of the founding father of UAE, Sheikh Zayed, has been that women are sort of the bedrock of uh, society and it is important to sort of facilitate uh, their involvement in all aspects of the community as well. So that's very evident when you look at the data as well. Almost 60% uh, of the government uh, workers, they are women. You've got out of that almost 30% in leadership roles as well. And that itself says a lot, right? And then if you look at uh, literacy, you've got almost 70% uh, of the graduates are women. And out of that, 40% actually enter the workforce. So that actually talks about how actively they promote and they, uh, they're they keen for women to come into the workforce. There is a lot of funding that is available for female entrepreneurs. So I would highly sort of recommend and uh, promote that it, it is a very easy environment for women to set up something from scratch, um, find something for them to do as far as a, a wor uh, work placement is concerned, as well as think about having this family life balance as well. Dubai has of course led the charge in many ways when it comes to technology adoption across industry. But what has this meant for Aster DM Healthcare in particular as it looks to leverage technology in the context of setting new benchmarks in patient care? I think you're absolutely right. Dubai has been always thinking ahead of its times. It always thinks not just five years ahead or ten years. In fact, what they're putting in place right now is a 50-year vision. And one of the things that we've been actively seeing over the last 10 years has been the growing um, um, sort of focus on technology and the adoption. And we're seeing it in various sectors, whether it's oil and gas, whether it is uh, tourism, whether it is retail. Um, I think for us as Astadium Healthcare, the biggest opportunity, of course, lies in healthcare uh, because the healthcare is a sector typically has been much slower when it comes to technology adoption. I think we are quite fast when it comes to technology adoption in terms of medical equipment. So when there's a new equipment which helps in better diagnosis, uh, better clinical outcomes, those adoptions are a lot faster. But when we are looking at the whole spectrum of care and when we are talking about uh, how do you make sure that the patient has much easier access to a, a doctor and a healthcare system, how do you make sure that it's, uh, it's more engaging so that you are able to manage your health in a better way on a day-to-day -day basis. I think that's been a little bit more of a challenging journey, but to be honest, more than challenging, it's more of a uh, golden opportunity. So uh, this is where uh, we get most excited about in Aster. How is it that we can actually focus on this movement from sick care to more preventative and proactive health care? So that's been a major area of concentration for us right now. What do you consider to be some of the most groundbreaking modern day best practices in the field of medicine and to what extent is Dubai championing and rallying behind those best practices? Um, so when we talk about advances as far as healthcare is concerned, one of the things that Dubai has been quite keen and active is on 3D printing. So there is a lot of 3D printing which is going on in terms of um, sort of real estate. How do you make buildings which are 3D printed? 
Uh, and that's, that's a huge vision that His Highness Sheikh Mohammed has. But when you think about healthcare, there are huge benefits when you look at an area within 3D printing. For example, printing of organs, when you're talking about prosthetics, uh, building surgical models. I think when you think about how you can use a technology like this to improve the quality of a patient, it's immense. So this is an area which is uh, of keen focus uh, within the sector, within this region. And another thing we're seeing a lot of focus is around the genetics testing, right? How do you ensure that we look at what our genetic makeup is and how do you create the environment to enable us to live better? Uh, and Dubai actually presents an excellent uh, case study because you have people from all over the world in sort of a proportion similar to what the global population looks like. So it helps people to kind of understand how the different genetic pool come together and what environment is created here as well. So I think these are two areas where we see a lot of uh, uh, attention that the Dubai Health Authority has uh, focused on and we expect to see a lot of advancements and sort of funding also to go into these two areas. Which of these initiatives has Asked DM Healthcare in particular implemented in its continuous quest to providing high quality healthcare? So at ASTO, we actually set up our own innovation lab last year. Uh, we are also uh, funded into the Jalila Foundation, which looks at innovation and research in the, sec in the region. So our whole idea is there are so many solutions which is coming out in terms of uh, medical, um, medical technologies, in terms of health tech. So what we have tried to do is we look after 20 million patients in a year. How is it that we can pilot out different solutions which are coming out, whether it is in terms of reducing the cost of healthcare, whether it is in improving the quality of healthcare, whether it is in uh, making it more accessible and scalable. So we actually partner with number of startups and entrepreneurs, look at the solution, see how we can actually embed it and sort of uh, curate solutions which will make life better for our patients. How can India-based healthcare startups better make their presence felt across Dubai's incredibly vibrant healthcare ecosystem? So I think one of the biggest problems that healthcare actually faces is the cost crisis in healthcare. Healthcare just keeps getting expensive year after year. What is amazing about what India is doing and sort of encouraging is frugal innovation. There are so many things that try to ensure that can you do something better at a lower cost. And we see many examples of that happening. And the other thing which is very prominently seen in some of the startups in India is on scalability. So aggregators and uh, telehealth providers, whether it's Practo, for example, are, are, have been very successful models. So I think there is a huge scope for uh, players like that to come here uh, and sort of extend that solution to, to the community here because this is still a, a more, uh, it's not as mature as the Indian industries are, right? So I think when we look at home healthcare, which seems to be picking up steam quite well in India, I think those are the kind of solutions which will fit in very well uh, for a place like uh, UAE and uh, other parts of the GCC as well. As Aster, as I mentioned before, we are partnering with a lot of uh, solutions like this to try and make those shifts as far as digital healthcare and e-healthcare is concerned. What are some of the challenges that you both face and foresee bubbling to the surface in this sector and how can and will they be addressed? Um, so I think uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, challenges which come in healthcare is always on the manpower. You know, getting the right doctors, getting the right nurses. There is a global scarcity when it comes to healthcare resources. So, um, so how do you bring those people in, right? And which is why uh, Dubai, again, becomes very attractive because this is a great place for people to uh, set up a family, uh, have the safety, security, quality of life. So I think uh, manpower is one of the biggest challenges. And the other one, like I mentioned, is you don't know how disruption will change the industry. How, I mean, that is something which all of us think about. Is it that a technology can, company is gonna come overnight and sort of change the way healthcare has been delivered, has been implemented, and has been experienced? So I think that, uh, that again goes back to my, uh, my comment that 
agility becomes very key in today's world because things are changing so fast. How quickly can you pivot and move to uh, the new model of care that will make sense for the people in the future? The focus of Leaders of Tomorrow is, of course, to bring to light the success stories of entrepreneurs pan-India, pan-industry. So what sort of advice might you have for them as they are now reimagining and reinventing their international expansion strategies? So I think what we always say is we need to have a real clarity on what it is that you want to achieve. Because today's world is just a lot about distractions. There are so many things going on. So how do you pick something that you love doing, that you are extremely passionate, and you have that clarity of what you want to do, but you also have the agility to pivot. Because a lot of times, I mean, you know the success rates when it comes to budding businesses, the model that you thought in your head might not be exactly uh, what will make sense. But how do you ensure that if, if we are failing, we fail fast and we get up fast and move faster, right? So that, uh, that kind of skill set and the mindset to be able to pivot is something which is very important. And always try to come from a position of constraint. Never, you know, resources are not in abundance. So how do you ensure that with limited resources, how do you make the most of it? And I come back to Dubai as a classic example. The city did not have much resources. But when you think about what they've managed to accomplish with nothing, is it's huge. Why have they accomplished all that they have and got a world position right now? It's because of the the quality of the people here and the mindset and the attitude and the vision. So I think the attitude goes a long way. So always keep that positive attitude and learn to pivot because the world is moving too fast. It's time for a short break, but on the other side, we bring you our conversation with Cure.ai, a medtech startup that's leveraging its artificial intelligence powered platform to help fight the deadly COVID-19 pandemic. All that and more after the break, so don't go anywhere.